Math 31, welcome to example two. So before we get going on example two, let's pick up the nth term formula for a geometric sequence. And let's break down this phrasing. Anytime you hear sequence, right, we know that that's gonna be associated with list of numbers, right, separated by commas. And when you hear geometric, we're gonna think of the letter R. We need a common ratio. All right, back in 9.2 when we had the word arithmetic here, we look for a common difference D, but when it's geometric, go R. And whenever you have sequence, it's a list of numbers separated by commas. And you can see it right here. Before we even read the directions, there's a list of numbers separated by commas. And I mentioned this separated by commas because when we get to the next section, this isn't gonna say sequence anymore. It's going to say the word series and we won't have commas, but we'll have plus signs. All right, so series are when you add the terms of a sequence, and that's got a whole new set of formulas for it. So we wanted to start to compartmentalize what we're looking at. Sequences, we got some lists separated by commas. Geometric, we're multiplying by a common ratio to get from one term to the next. All right, so in a geometric sequence with the first term a sub one, and the common, oh, that says ration, Let's go ahead and just pretend that's not there. This should definitely be the word ratio. I will fix that. All right, so in a geometric sequence with the first term a sub one and a common ratio r, the nth term a sub n is given by the following. So we have a sub n will be equal to the first term a sub one times r raised to the n minus one power. All right, this is the explicit formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence. And much like the nth term for your arithmetic sequence, there are four variables here. There's a sub n itself, a sub one, there's r, and then there's n. All right, so there are four variables in this equation. And much like the arithmetic sequence formulas, typically you'll be given three of these variables and, ask, and be asked to solve for the fourth one. The most important two are a sub one and r. You'll definitely want those two as you float through these problems, but typically, all right, typically, you'll be given three of the variables and asked to solve for the fourth. All right, there will be times when you're only given two, a sub one and r, and you're asked to find the explicit formula, meaning you would still have an n in your answer. But if, if not, if it's not the kind where it says find a sub n, then you're actually gonna be given three of these four variables and solve for the fourth one. So, so let's play this out. I want you to see when I'm given, being asked to find a sub five and a sub n in general, right? So when we find a sub five, we'll definitely be given three of the four variables and we'll solve for the fourth. For a sub n, my answer is still gonna have an n in it, so I won't be solving for this n variable nor a sub n. I'll just need these two super important terms, a sub one and r. All right, but let's, let's unpack this as we go through this. So find a sub five, the fifth term, and a sub n, the general term, so I wanna get an explicit formula for this geometric sequence. All right, so again, I hear sequence, I go, all right, I'm making a list. When I hear geometric, I think I better find a common ratio. So let's see if we can spot the pattern just on site and then apply some formulas so we see how these formulas work. So I see 6,400 to 1,600 to 400 to 100. So let's first discuss why this is not arithmetic. All right, if this was arithmetic, we would take, let me clear this out, our second term, 1600, and subtract our first term and find out that D is potentially negative 4800. Because I lost 4800, right, to go from 6400 down to 1600. Well, if that was the case, we would add negative 4800, let me keep that in view, I would technically add negative 4800 to 1600, if I did 1600 minus 4800 again, 
I should be at negative 3200, and that's not the case here, right? You see the third term is 400, so this is not arithmetic. All right, so we've got a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, and a sub four. All right, so it's not arithmetic, it's potentially geometric. Now, if I wanted to figure out what the common ratio was, I need to take a more current term and put it in ratio to the previous term. So for example, I could make a ratio of a sub two to a sub one. So we could do 1600 in ratio to 6400. Let's see what that would leave us with. So now if I did 1600 in ratio to 6400, what are we looking at? It says 0 0.25. If I hit math frac, it looks like it's about 1 fourth. Okay, let's see if this holds. Let me check it against another common ratio. All right, let's see if this is holding. Let's do a sub three in ratio to a sub two. So my more current term in ratio to the previous term, let's see if this holds with one fourth. So now let's do 400 divided by 1600. That's looking good, right? I'm seeing that fraction of one fourth again. All right, so this is checking out. Now let's see. If I do 400 and I divide it by four, and again, dividing by four is like multiplying by a fourth, I can see that I am gonna to get to 100. And maybe just through multiplication, you can already see what a sub five is going to be equal to. But I do wanna work these formulas to show you how this is playing out. But at this point, we know each term is one fourth of the previous term. So let's just write this off to the side so we can see this. So we know each term in my sequence is one fourth that of the previous term. All right, so there's my little side work. And that's all fine and good, that's great. We, we know our first term, a sub one, which is super important. We know our ratio, our common ratio. So let's just keep track of what we do know. I know my first term is 6,400, and I know my R value is 1 fourth. Okay, this is a geometric sequence. It says it right there. I've actually proven it's geometric just by looking at these common ratios. So I get to use this formula. That formula is at my disposal. Let's try it. So here we go, I know a sub n is equal to a sub one times r to the n minus one. All right, now I'm being asked to find a sub five. So let's put in n equaling five. So what is a sub five? Well, that would be equal to a sub one, which is 6,400, times r, which is 1 fourth, to the n minus one, well, n is five. All right, so let's see what we have. Let me put this in a little separator. Okay, so here we go. If I take a look at this, well, let me make sure you have room to see what I'm going to do. Let me scooch this up. I think we're about to run out of room. And I want you to be able to see what I've got here. All right. So let's crunch this on our calculator because this is ultimately 6400 times 1 fourth to the fourth power. All right, let me clear this out. 6400 times one fourth to the fourth, we are looking at 25. And I, I would have guessed that anyways, because if you do 100 and you multiply it by a fourth, you are going to see it's 25. So I know a sub five is 25. There's one of my answers, all right? And again, if I just did 100 times one fourth, I, I would have seen it was 25. And that's only half of the problem, right? It says, hey, find a sub five and a sub n. Well, when you want to find a sub n, that's when, again, you bottom line to find a sub n, you need a sub 1 and r. Okay, so let's go find a sub n now. So we know a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So we know this is 6,400 times 1 fourth to the n minus 1. And that's how we leave it. All right, so my, my next answer is a sub n is 6,400 times one fourth to the n minus one. All right, 
there are my two answers for this question. I have found a sub five and I have found a sub n. Now, personally, again, like arithmetic sequences, I would have found this first and then I would have just plugged in n equaling five. All right, I think it's always, for me, I like finding the general term, the explicit formula first, and then plugging in the n value. Because again, look, if I, if I did this, right, if I really wanted a sub five, I know a sub five is 6,400 times one fourth to the, oops, I moved that, five minus one. Okay, well, that's exactly what we had over here. So I always just find it easier to find the general term first and then plug in my specific n value. All right, but you're more than welcome to just go straight to a sub five. All right, so bottom line, if you have a geometric sequence, meaning you have your starting point, right, but you, and you spot this common ratio, you're allowed to use this formula that a sub n is equal to a sub one times r to the n minus one. And with that being said, we're gonna manipulate this formula. All right, so we're gonna look at quite a few examples, or about three or four, and we're just gonna manipulate this formula and see how to work it. All right, I'll catch you in a few, bye.